Kitco News special coverage of the PDAC convention is brought to you by Gold Mining and Uranium Energy Corp. History repeats itself. That is the theme of our discussion with Chen Lin, founder of Lin Asset Management. And we'll be discussing all things to do with the quality super cycle as well as big investment ideas that you should be paying attention to right now. Welcome back to the show, Chen. Thank you, David. Uh, I want to start with a point you made in one of your earlier presentations uh, uh, from a few days ago. You said that in the past recessions or economic contractions, gold has outperformed other assets or has taken off, as you wrote in your presentation, following the crisis. And now you're expecting history to repeat itself. What's coming up next for gold then? Oh, that's a very, very good question. Actually, you found out that every uh, recession, every downturn of the stock market, gold always the first to come out of it. Always the first. So if you think about that in 2000, 2008, and then even the recently 2020 uh, stock market crash, gold come out first. So for even for investors not interested in gold, you're watching gold price actually can give you a direction of the where market is going to be in the next few weeks or a few months. Okay, but uh, why is it that gold doesn't tend to do well during a recession? It, that, that's a very good question. So what happened was there's a margin call, there's a fear, usually uh, money goes to the cash, the sideline, right? And then the US dollar go very strong, that's negative for the gold. So when the market crash, Gold actually tend to go down initially. Okay. However, when there's a lot of money on the side, okay, when people start to have a, a tiny little bit appetite to put money out and people feel like uncertain about the future, they tend to put money into gold. Looking ahead though, Chen, let's suppose we have a recession next year. That's mostly going to be caused by higher interest rates. As some people would say, the Fed tightening is going to cause yeah. the next recession. Wouldn't higher interest rates mean higher real rates, which would be bad for gold? It, it would be bad for gold. But if you think about that, uh, people are talking about a Paul Volcker potentially go, raising to the very high and crash everything, including gold. Yes. But that was then. This is now. We have 30 trillion. I mean, United States have 30 trillion in debt. Okay, if the interest rate go up, even it go up to 4%, you think about that, how much trillions of uh, money will pay each year for the interest rate. You think about there's so much populism in, in the in US, United States right now. People will say, oh, we don't want to pay the fat cat, the Saudi Arabia, we don't want to pay China all the interest rate, right? There will be outroar on that. So I don't think United States for the fat or the interest rate can go to a very significant high, actually necessarily the crash inflation. I, I don't see that happen. So do you think uh, inflation will rise from current levels at a pace that is faster than the rise of interest rates? Which will rise faster, interest rates or inflation from now? Oh, interest rate will rise, interest rate definitely rise. But I see, personally, I feel inflation, there's a very strong evidence. There's a lot of uh, materials are going down, a lot of price are going down, computer components like iPad are going down because it was overbuilt during the pandemic. The price are dropping very hard. I said in my, one of my slides, the memory yes. went down 70% in the past few months. So there, the goods inflation already start coming down, but it really is a service, a house. Those inflation will take will stay for a while. So I see in general, inflation rate may, may come down a little, but interest rate will come up, okay. definitely. Um, so it's interesting how you mentioned, uh, going back to your slide, it's interesting how you mentioned uh, the last few financial crises, 2008, 2001, the tech bubble burst and of course 2020. Uh, now those were periods of economic uh, contraction or recession. Uh, first of all, we are not currently, at least not officially in a recession, we just have a bear market in stocks. Do you think it's a fair comparison to make uh, just because we have a correction in stocks, cryptos, risk assets? Is it the same situation as 2008 when gold will rise and come out on top after this? Well, look, we Q1 already have economic contraction. You look at the United States government data, it's Q1, it's already Q2. We are actually writing very, very thin. Okay, at the end of uh, this month, it's end of Q2, and then data will come out in August. There's a very reasonable chance that Q2, or we may go negative on GDP again, then the two quarter of negative GDP, it's a recession. Okay. Um... Yes, the Atlanta Fed has been projecting, we're revising down their estimates. I think the latest estimate was 0.9% growth in Q2, 
which was down from 1.1% before. Exactly. And then so many companies are laying, laying out people. I mean, the yeah. crash and then the sentiments going down. Consumer sentiments lowest in the decade. So all these come, we still have a, a few weeks to go for the, for the quarter. We may have a negative quarter again. I, I'm going to bring this up. Janet Yellen recently said that uh, she doesn't see any signs of a recession. If you were to have a conversation with somebody who says they don't see any signs of a recession and you were to take the opposite argument, what would you say? Oh, recession is already here. What in, signs do in you lot see? Of, in a lot of sectors. In a lot of sectors, you think of, well, you know, stock market is a leading indicator, okay? And then you have a consumer demand, consumer willingness to buy good, buy, buy car, buy large item. All these are at a, a historical low, right? So the Fed, if they, the, they, they're, they're tightening probably already, people already pre already pre-prepared pre for that. The market, stock market, the forward-looking animal, right? They already look at forward, they say, oh, we, we, we will have a crash. So that's why everything's coming down in the past few weeks. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go back to gold and gold's historic performance. Has gold typically been a leading or lagging indicator of a reset, of a re economic recovery? It, it's a, that's a very good question, David. Actually, it is a leading indicator. Every time gold bottom first, gold goes up, and, and then, then the and economy then recovers. Economy. Yeah. Maybe because the data is lagging by one quarter. Economy, well, actually, what happened was usually, if you watch it carefully each time, gold goes up and then stock market goes up after a few weeks or a few months, and then general market goes up oh, because yes. everything yeah. is... Uh, so gold actually is a canary in the coal mine. So you, for, even for the investor not interested in gold, you watching gold can give you a good indicator of the where market goes. I'm very curious as to why, I mean, the, the data speaks for itself. I'm very curious as to why gold tends to recover so well after a recession or after an economic contraction. When you think about it, isn't that the time, isn't the recovery the time to go into risk assets, to take on more risk, go into stocks, double down, lever up? Why go into gold, a safe haven asset? Oh yeah, that's a very good question. So my my understanding, okay, I mean, I studied for a long time. My understanding is uh, you when you first sell off, right now we are in the middle of sell off, the huge money pile into the, a bank account in the sideline, understand the waiting, they're collecting zero or negative interest rate. People are so scared. Gold actually is a tiny, has a tiny, tiny risk, right? If you want to take a little bit of risk, what thing you buy, first thing you buy is gold because, and also people see coming out of the recession, gold will do very well. So when people willing to a tiny little bit of risk, they go to gold. Okay, so uh, let's finish up the macro conversation. So. Given your views on uh, the economy, number one, when do you see a recession uh, ending? If you say that we are currently in a recession, when will the recovery happen? That's a good question. I see we possibly, likely, are in a recession. We have to see the tech, the data in Q2, right? Yes. We, we still have a few weeks. Yes. And, uh, and then we may potentially get in real, a real recession next year. Okay. Well, okay. When we come out of it, I think it's, and uh, one day, we can watch that, the Fed finally blink. They say, okay, we, we cannot, you know, tighten like this anymore. Yes. That's when the gold will rally really, really hard. And then a lot of other risk assets will rally. And then we, that's where we start coming out of recession. Maybe we need to do another QE. Simple question, but I get this asked, I get asked this question personally by many of my friends. What should I do now with my investments? Putting this together, what should I do now? Oh, I personally, I think the best investment is still in commodity because if you look at the, all the past recessions, okay, the, the inventory, commodity, not just gold and silver, uh, uh, inventory are quite low, okay? So, and then the commodity price likely drop, but, because, and, but then the quick, any quick stimulus, the commodity price will come back very quickly. And in particular, I like silver. I think we are at the eve of a silver boom for the next decade. I want to talk about silver and some other commodities you have in your presentation. You are bullish on silver, you're bullish on PGMs, you're bullish on uranium. Before we talk about that, is there anything you're bearish on right now in any asset class? Oh, I, I mentioned uh, in my presentation one month ago, I, I was bearish on Bitcoin. So, okay. <laughs> but uh, you know, right now it's down so much. I, I don't know why I don't want to take a position anymore. Okay. They can go either up and down. 
Okay, so you were bearish on the cryptocurrencies. What about stocks? Do you think the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ has fallen enough? Oh, I think they've fallen a lot. Uh, if it's enough, if it's the bottom, I'm not sure. They may go down another 5-10% easily. Yeah. Okay. But for long-term investor, you should start looking for opportunity in gold stock, in ADR, in biotechs, in other stock. Well, why would I, Chip, somebody might ask you, why would I buy a gold stock when, when you look at the gold stock prices this year, they've been following the stock market. They haven't been really in line with gold. Gold has been flat all year round. If you just take the beginning of the year to now, stocks are down, but gold stocks are down. So maybe in a risk off environment, a gold stock would follow the S&P 500, wouldn't follow the gold price, right? Uh, it will follow, basically what influence, and you, that's a good question, what impact gold stock price, right? What, there's a many factor, gold is the most important factor. And then also there's a cost of producing gold. Yes. You understand this year is particularly inflation so high, yes. all energy price so high, labor cost so high, COVID everywhere. So that cost of producing gold also okay. going up. That's actually the reason gold stock is not doing well. Uh, okay, so when, as soon as we, you know, for example, hypothetically, if there's a end of the war or the other thing, uh, Ukraine war, if there's any stabilization of oil price, the gold stock will outperform gold. Interesting. Okay, so that's a very important point. So you, you, in your view, gold stocks have gone down or underperformed because of shrinking margins, because of rising operating costs, not because they are correlated or they are, well, they are correlated, but not because they fell in tandem with the stocks. The stock market did not cause the gold stocks to call Come down it will have a little bit. It will be because ETF, yeah. ETF, because they will have cost a little bit. That are usually found, okay. but it's you know the quite small. But let's suppose in a normal economic scenario where there's no eight percent inflation, where the costs are stable, let's say gold goes up and the stock market goes down. What happens to gold stocks? Gold stocks should do well. Gold stocks do very well. Yeah, gold stock can do very that like in the nineteen thirties, nineteen twenties, thirty. I mean, at that time, gold price was fixed. Yes. Okay, gold prices were fixed, and then the, the economy, okay. stock market going down, the cost is going down. Okay, a lot of people looking for a job. I had to go start it very well, okay. outperform everything. All right. Well, I'd like to get your outlook on silver now. This is a question I've been getting as well. If there's a recession coming, why would you be bullish on silver? Because typically silver has done poorly in, during past recessions. Right, this recession is very different. Uh, one of the key reason is the, my, that's my, my recent presentation, the solar panel demand is going up, going through the roof right now because of all the ESG, all these, uh, uh, you know, the, all the government, because of high oil price, they want to diversify from the carbon related energy source. Yeah. Okay, uh, so, so over, solar panel demand is going through the roof. That's one factor. The second factor you should consider is uh, the so, silver loading in the solar panel is also going through the roof. So seldom you have two things going in tandem, going to together, right? The usually at, in historically silver silver as you loading factor going down while so, uh, solar panel demand going up, and that your silver usage in the solar panel would still double in the past decade. But if solar usage is going up per panel and solar panel is going up, two things synchronized, we will have a tremendous growth of silver usage in the solar panel. Are you saying the solar panel demand is independent of aggregate total demand from a recession? Yeah, I, I can say that. Let's because, suppose, yeah, let I me mean, suppose we have a slowdown, demand for everything drops. Solar panel is still, I guess, relatively inelastic, should we say? Right, because a lot of places, like the largest solar panel market is China. China already set their foot to increase 50% this year versus last year. They already, they, they already planned, they already purchased or already done. Okay, if you look at the China's, uh, even you look at the commodity use in the solar industry, like uh, alkaline, actually stock is also going up because the demand of solar panel is there. Okay. There's no question about that. Okay. Now, you were, uh, you were talking about uh, demand and supply uh, numbers, data from the Silver Institute. I think in your presentation, you disagreed with the uh, with, with their assessment that there is a surplus right now? There's a, they, 
Well, the, the, this is a, I strongly disagree with uh, Solar Institute's estimate of the silver usage in solar panel this year. If you go to their website, their estimate is 12%. At, at the end, that will lead to a, you know, almost e equilibrium, maybe a small surplus of silver, okay? Only 12% increase. Like I already showed, told you, the China's number is 50% increase in solar panel, okay, in solar power, 50%, five zero. And then Europe is going up very high. And then each, each solar panel will have more silver. So how can you see, you see the number doesn't add up. How can the silver usage in solar panel only go up 12% this year? Yes. That's why I strongly disagree with the Silver Institute's estimate. Uh, investor might ask you, Shen, what is the um, timeline of your silver thesis for the solar panel uh, as story? Is this going to take 10 years, 15 years? Oh, no, years? no. I think it's a 6 to 12 months. Very, oh. very quick. It can be. So that's why I, I'm, I love this downturn. I want to use down. I'm managing my family money. I want to use the downturn to, uh, to, to put down, um, to invest in silver. I invest in other precious metals as well. Yes. Uh, so to accumulate for the, for the next upswing. Okay. Uh, Briefly, let's touch on uranium. Now, the, the price has been very volatile the last couple of months. We saw it go to 60 something dollars a pound and then it fell down. Um, it's been a long time since the uranium market has been this volatile. What has been the cause of this volatility? Oh, there's a lot of investors, they were scared. They just tried to sell everything and then move yeah. on the sale. And so uranium is a small market. It can go up and down very quickly. But we have United States government already announced they're going to have a 4.3 billion for domestic uranium production. And United States have to stop importing uranium from Russia. Uh, think about that's the future. So uranium actually, even more, it, you know, decoupled from the general economy. No matter what economy goes, the nuclear power station in the United States has to operate, and the United States want to remove Russia from the supply chain. So uranium could have a boom for a long time, and then it's, this, it, it will decouple from the economy for sure. Interesting. Now, do you think that um, uranium will hit a price soon that will incentivize North American miners to start operating again? Keep in mind, there's no mining right now in North America. Right. I remember the old days when the United States government was still sponsor uranium production. The, yeah, uranium price has to be a lot higher. I think at How least high, at least a hundred, probably more than that. That's the most aggressive uh, production number I've heard. Most, most, it's very too aggressive. I think I, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Well. All right. Uh, finally, digital currencies. Now, China is making a digital central bank currency. England, the Bank of England is considering one. The ECB is considering one. The Bank of Canada is working on one. The Fed, Federal Reserve is working on one. What does this mean for, number one, commodities? Will it be competition for commodities? Uh, or number two, uh, how will it impact the rest of the cryptocurrency space? Well, first, uh, I just tell you, I did some little bit of research on Chinese um, digital currency. It was very successful, actually. What you see the key difference between their digital currency and all the others is the Chinese government make it transaction free. That's like Amazon, like you have, uh, the, all these Apple, all these companies love it. You know, they don't need to pay credit cards transaction fee anymore. It's a zero transaction fee. They even because they are based on the second generation, next generation crypto technology. Okay, so their transaction fee is so low, actually the government just ch chip in a little bit to make a transaction uh, free. And, and then they, what they found, their experience found so far was, it's even cheaper for them because, cheaper than printing the money, print the paper money, because it costs a lot of money to, to print and maintain the paper money. So, they, so that's, and then it's growing, doing very well. So that's what I saying in my presentation a month ago. I said United States has to come up with answer. They have to compete with China in this digital currency war. And I believe those will be negative uh, to crypto because crypto still have a transaction fee. Even they're much lower than Visa MasterCard, they still have a transaction fee. If a central bank will come out with a digital currency with no transaction fee, that will be a big threat to the, uh, to the crypto. Okay. Uh, how I'm just, I'm just how would it compete with something like Bitcoin? Don't they have different use cases? They will have a different use case. Of course, Bitcoin will be used uh, in more in the future. It will be more limited to the dark world, right? People who you know crime, crime criminal family or the other drug dealing, and then for the other, they maybe just use a 
digital currency. All right, Jen, thank you very much for coming on the show today. My pleasure. Pleasure to see you in Toronto, and thank you for watching our PDAC coverage. We'll have more for you here. Kitco News special coverage of the PDAC convention is brought to you by Gold Mining and Uranium Energy Corp.